football club that will never be a fake cup final, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> well, we are in London, I thought I might have some support for it. <laughs> what we need to do, what the Leave campaign needs to do, and what I have urged Vote Leave, the official designated vehicle, we have got to get into the other half of it. We've got to start attacking the enemy's goal. And when the enemy are at their absolute weakest, is on this whole question of open door migration, the effect that it's had on the lives of ordinary Britons over the course of the last decade, and the threat that it poses given the new terror and security threat that we face in the West. I'm sorry to say that at the moment they don't appear to have done it. And they don't within them, I think, have the voices to make those arguments. Because if you've been part of the cabinet that has overseen net migration, and that's if you believe the official figures, which seem to be being corrected by the week, but if you're part of the cabinet that has seen net migration running at record levels and running at 10 times the post-war average, you're perhaps not the best place to make those arguments. I tried very hard over the course of this weekend to say, look, we must let bygones be bygones. Whatever has been said in the past is irrelevant. We need to be together. And I would love myself and you, Kip, to work with you on this campaign because actually we are the four horses when it comes to immigration, when it comes to the impact that it's had on people in this country. And I'm sorry to say uh, that every time I attempt to try and work with them, I am rebuffed and rejected. Well, fine. If they don't want us to be part of their campaign, we will make the arguments ourselves, and we will, between now and June the 23rd, make one very simple point. When Theresa May says that it is difficult to control immigration as a member of the European Union, She's wrong. It isn't difficult, it's impossible. <laughs> and the reason is all too clear. This is a British passport. And what are the first two words on it? European Union. Since the Treaty of Maastricht, we have been citizens of the European Union. And this passport, is available to 508 million people. And yes, we're able, not being part of Schengen, to ask people to show their passport as they come through Dover, but there's nothing we can do to stop unlimited numbers of people from EU countries settling in this country and enjoying the same rights and privileges as all the rest of us. We warned in 2004 that letting in the former communist countries would lead not just to a total loss of control, but to an unprecedented flow into Britain. And we have been proved right. And yet, the Westminster set still haven't really blocked it. I guess it's because so many of them come from such privileged and wealthy backgrounds, and so rarely ever dare spray outside the A25, that they... Many of them think that open door mass immigration is terrific. And in some ways, let's be honest, for them it is. Because it's cheaper nannies, and it's cheaper chauffeurs, and it's cheaper gardeners. And if you own a big business, be it in agriculture or manufacturing or building, particularly, you know, it gives you access to unlimited amounts of cheap labour. But the impact of this has been felt by ordinary, decent people in this country. Just think about housing. And here we are in London with a massive, massive housing crisis. And we learn, of course, that the Green Belt, the Green Belt that many of us love so much around London, is now very directly under threat. Is it any wonder, given current levels of immigration into Britain, we have to build a new house every seven minutes? just to cope with the current flow of people. And what about primary school places? With an explosion in the birth rate from newly arrived people, we estimate that we're going to have to find another 200,000 primary school places 
by 2020. But I say estimate because the point is that good government is about planning forwards. But how can you plan forwards for public service provision when you have open door immigration and you've no idea in five years' time with the nearest two million how many people will actually be living in the country? You can't. As far as the National Health Service is concerned, I did try last year in the general election to raise the issue of health and tourism, uh, but a simple fact is that last year the British government paid out 6.2 billion sterling to European hospitals that treated British patients. And despite the fact there are many more EU nationals living in Britain than there are British nationals living in the EU, for the 6.2 billion we sent in that direction, how much came back to this country? 405 million. So whichever way you cut this, we're getting a wrong deal in terms of the health service. Now I know the Chancellor will keep telling us that our GDP is going up. But if your population increases by half a million a year, it's not particularly surprising, folks, is it, that your GDP goes up? The question is, is GDP per capita going up? And it's not. And Bank of England sources are perfectly clear that for all three working people on average salaries, their real wages, their real living standards have declined by 10% since 2008. And perhaps that's why there are so many people out there, hard-working Britons out there, that have been switching their political allegiance to us because they are the ones who pay the price for irresponsible open-door migration. Now, there are many other things that we simply can't put a cost on. Social cohesion, a sense in our cities or market towns that we are one community living together. That, of course, has become increasingly divided, fragmented, segmented within our towns and cities because the sheer pace of people coming has been too great to integrate. There are also the implications for crime. With the fact that 41% of registered crime in London is now committed by foreign nationals is, I would suggest, a source of concern and says to me that post-Brexit what we need to do is to put in place an immigration and work permit scheme along the lines that countries like Australia put into place. We want good people to come to our country. We don't want to discriminate against them because they're from India or New Zealand in favour of Romania or Bulgaria. We should be open to the world. We should want people in sensible numbers, with skills, with trades, who haven't got criminal records and are prepared to pay their own medical insurance for at least five years. That is the future, I believe. And that was on the 29th of April 2015. That is a year ago today that I went to Strasbourg. The general election was just a week later. And I did it in an attempt to make this a debate, to make this an issue in the general election. I have to tell you that I failed totally and utterly to do so. It was even said by one of the national broadcasters that I'd taken a break from the general election campaign. But I was trying to warn that the European Union had embarked on a very bad and ill thought out project. The common asylum policy that my friend Mr Juncker was putting into place this time last year went miles away from any traditional definition of what a refugee is. Now, a refugee is an individual, a group of individuals, who fear persecution because of their race, orientation, beliefs, 